I'm Ron Smith. I'm a professor of applied economics in the Department of Economics, Mathematics and Statistics, and I've been in Birkbeck since 1976. I teach statistics and econometrics, and I'm an applied economist. I do almost anything which involves numbers. So I've done things from football to whether Britain should be in the euro, and I like large data sets, and people bring me along large data sets, and so I work on those. Um, so about half my research is primarily econometric, statistical, the other half is military. So there are very few defence economists in the country, and I'm one of the few of them, and I talk to senior military, uh, lecture at the staff college, and sort of interact with them. So it's a kind of odd combination of things of doing um, statistical analysis, looking at military problems. Um, but one of the things which is actually very useful in terms of teaching statistics is the sort of research and consultancy that I do actually provides lots of examples for the students. It relates very directly to the sort of things uh, that they're doing. Because most of our students are working and they need to be numerate, they need to be able to handle data and think of different ways of doing it. And uh, my research experience, my consultancy experience proved very, very useful in terms of, of conveying the practical application of statistics and how you handle large data sets. Econometrics is really the branch of statistics that looks at economic problems. And so it really is a part of statistics, but we use a range of techniques which are not standard in the rest of statistics. That's why it gets uh, its name. So we're particularly interested in analyzing economic or social behavior where you have to think about the problems of causality. In many cases, the real difficulty with observational data is you don't know what causes what. You can observe correlations, and a lot of the econometric techniques are to try and track down the causality in terms of the relationships. So for instance, one of the problems I've looked at is would the UK have been better off if it had joined the Euro? And that's a question you've got to ask a counterfactual. What would have happened had the UK joined the Euro in 1999? Well, not only would the UK have had a different policy, but the Euro would have been a different area. So you have to model the adjustments on both sides. So that's what we call a macroeconomic question about the whole economy. But a lot of the time we're looking at microeconometric problems about how people make decisions, how much they drink, uh, whether they smoke, all those sorts of things, and then looking at the incentives and what sort of factors would influence that. Um, in fact, one of the areas I've been working on, um, partly because of a PhD student, is happiness eco economics. So there's large surveys, a particular one called the British Household Panel Survey, which asks people questions about how happy they are over a number of years. And one of the problems there is knowing to what extent does this simply reflect there are some people who are really miserable and say they're unhappy all the time, others who are really cheerful, and so you have to try and remove that personal effect um, when you're looking at the influence of, as we were doing, what are called capabilities, your ability to do things, your state of health, those sorts of things on people's levels of happiness. So it's trying to disentangle those sorts of effects in a social science or an economic uh, structure. We've got to allow for people's behaviours in those circumstances. Most of the work on defence economics, like most economics, is written in a mathematical and statistical language. And that means that a lot of people who would be interested in the issues, people in the military or in the peace movement or in non-governmental organisations like Oxfam, just can't read the defence economics literature because it's all in mathematics and statistics. So the idea of that book was to try and write something which had no equations in it but was something that somebody with a non-quantitative background could understand the issues which went into uh, into 
military economic considerations. And very often they find the economic perspective very strange. And so it's partly explaining why economists looked at these problems and why it was useful uh, to, to apply in that sort of way. And um, I was actually very pleased it got shortlisted for the Duke of Westminster's Military Medal, which is ne nearly always history books. Um, and military history is very popular, and it was won by a military history book. But um, actually to get an economics book on that short list, um, I was very, very pleased about that. The term political, e political economy is actually a very, very wide one. And I use it to indicate that in many cases, when you're looking at economic policy, these are not purely economic issues. The politics gets involved in them uh, very directly. And that's certainly the case in the military. Um, then you've got to look at all the political issues which go into it, which are n not just the obvious political ones of party politics. It's the structure of government, the role of inter-service rivalry, the role of industry lobbying, all those other sorts of political factors which go into the making of these decisions. And so it's just to indicate I quite often look at these problems in a much wider context than the purely narrow economic ones. You've got to put that other uh, context uh, in as well. We're a rather strange department because there was a department of economics and there was a small department of mathematics and statistics. And we merged and in fact the merger worked out tremendously well. And that's partly because most of the economists were on the mathematical statistical end of economics anyway, and uh, partly because we could cooperate in developing new courses, particularly in finance, and that enabled us to share the skills on the mathematical statistical side. Um, so it's a very friendly department, and the merger of the economists, the mathematicians, and the statisticians worked very well. And in particular, since we could grow the student numbers for, on the mathematical side, we could also develop um, more new mathematics courses. So one of the strange things which I hadn't realized is we had a, a BSc degree in mathematics and statistics, but there's quite a lot of people who love mathematics and hate statistics. And so launching a pure mathematics degree attracted a lot more people who'd been put off by doing the statistics. And so we've hired a number of very good new pure mathematicians and strengthened that area um, very substantially. And there's actually joint work, not just in finance, uh, between the mathematicians and the uh, economists in terms of doing it. And one of the things in talking to students I tend to emphasize is we are very mathematical and statistical. To be, to be able to work in economics, you really have to know that language because it's written, everything's written in this mathematical and statistical language. And one of the strengths of the department is that we can take students who not only know no maths, but think they hate maths and think they can't do maths, and we can get them, because we see, we explain why it's useful, we're very used to teaching like that, and so we can get people from being almost completely non-numerate to being quite advanced mathematicians over a period of a couple of years. And um, that, that sort of linkage is, is very important. And quite often the people we have who are coming on our courses, uh, particularly on the master's courses, are not primarily intending to be economists what they want to do is to argue with economists. So they actually get the technical skills which enables them, and so they would go on doing their current job, which may be as a civil engineer doing project appraisal, or, or a lawyer doing competition law. They would go on doing that, but they would be able to have that economic language which will enable them to argue with the economists in that, that sort of way.